So, can you start off by introducing yourself just so we know who we're talking to? Charlie C. Great. So, we're out on the road here in Reading, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. How's the tour going? You only have about, what, four or five dates left? Um, kind of. Just for the World War III tour, yeah. but we stay on tour. We uh, go uh, with Avenged. We meet up with Avenged somewhere in Florida. And uh, we start that tour. That one's three weeks long. So and we're broken hearted that you're just not coming back up yeah. to this area. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. We, well, we were here with them last time. Mm -hmm. That's the only, I think the only other time we've been to Reading before was with Avenge at the same venue uh, like four or five months ago. Okay. Yeah. So you have the uh, American <coughs> Tragedy Redux album that's coming out in mm -hmm. what, about six days? Yeah. Comes out in six days. Something like that. I don't know, Tuesday? Okay. Um, but yeah, remix record should be cool. So what led to your decision to do a remix album? Um, it's something that we never did before and we just thought it'd be fun and there's so many good artists that do remixes and stuff that we would love to see what they would do with some of our songs, you know? A lot of people having remixers work on, on songs and change it up and give their interpretation of the song so we thought it'd just be cool to see to give them our, both of our records, and, and, or American Tragedy, and have them choose whatever song they think they could work out the best and go to town on it. That's awesome. So yeah. you have Jonathan Davis still yeah. on the tracks, right? Mm -hmm. And I know like the new Korn albums, like he's working with, what is it, Skill, Skrillex? Skrillex. I can never say that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, like how do you feel about this like a blending of like rock and like electronica like coming together that we're seeing a lot of like now? I think that um, like as far as rock music, there's, I mean, it's been done for so long and and you, there's only so much you can do with just guitars and vocals, you know, it's right. like everything's kind of been done, you know, so I think that just as far as society becoming more digital and electronic, the music kind of has to follow that too, so it's like that's the only way to kind of make music new and exciting is, is changing it with, and adapting to what's going on. So um, you can still have rock music, but it's got to have something new. And I think electronic music and dubstep and stuff like that is, is the way that it's going to go for sure. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. that's like the dubstep's like the thing you keep hearing like mm -hmm. everywhere now. So, but it's definitely going over. Like I know just even being out like at a lot of these festivals, you're seeing like so much blending of like yeah. electronic and then hip hop and rock. And, yeah. I mean, even with you guys like playing like smaller club shows versus like bigger festivals, is there one that you're like prefer over the other? Um, I like them both for different reasons. I like the big festivals because you play for such a big crowd and there's new people that have never heard of you and you're, you're getting to play in front of those people. You're playing along with a lot of other bands that you've grown up listening to or you're a fan of. But the clubs, I mean, that's why I like festivals. The reason why I like clubs is just because it's intimate and it's, people are just there to see you and it's just you and your fans and it's, it, there's something cool about that too. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you guys have been out with such a variety of, of bands, you know, I've seen the, especially like at festivals and then here and then you're going out again. Like, what I love so much is that it's not like one particular genre. Yeah. But yeah, that's what it's starting to become, you know? It's starting to mix it up. Well, it's awesome to like not be boxed in like that. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, we don't really fit in anywhere. <laughs> I try to go to the hip hop club, I get my ass kicked. I go to the hardcore show and I can't even mosh. What are you doing in here, buddy? <laughs> no, what are you guys, uh, what are you guys doing? <laughs> interview. <laughs> okay, come on. Hey, wait, haven't you done an interview with you before? Absolutely. Yeah, I was in the Pop Culture Madness. Pop Culture Madness? Yeah, I yeah. Remember. Awesome. <laughs> So the last time like we caught up was at 48 Hours Festival. Uh -huh. What did you think of that? It was the first like big rock festival in Vegas. It was awesome. It was good. It was it was run very well for the first time. Um, you know that it, that it had been done, but it was fun. It was cool. It was a good vacation, and we weren't touring at the time, so it was just like a two day, two night stay in Vegas. So do you guys have any time off coming up soon? Um, we get. Well, we tour up until December 17th, and then we get, uh, we're going to start writing our, our third record, okay. so we'll have some time off um, around starting Christmas time and, until probably the spring or early summer. 
So are you a band that can put things together on the road, or do you have to kind of take some time off to like do that? Um, no. Well, there's. I'm setting up my gamer setup, but they're setting up like actual studio equipment. Oh, okay. I just hope it doesn't interfere with my gaming. And <laughs> have to have them leave. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want that to happen. <laughs> What game are you playing? Uh, the new Call of Duty. Okay. Yeah, I've never played it before. Uh, except things recording. <laughs> yeah, I've never really played a video game. I'm just gonna try it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was gonna say you and everybody else uh -huh. is playing that game right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a big thing. So, what can we be expecting with the third album? Are you guys gonna try anything different? Any surprises coming along the way? Um, I think uh, I'm sure we'll try different shit we always do. I mean, the music we write kind of goes with whatever we're going through at the time. And um, so there's going to be a lot of songs about video games and shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, there's going to be... <laughs> um, no, there'll be different stuff and, and, and we're not listening to our record label at all. We're kind of, we're just the record label saying, you guys work on the, the record. We're not going to give you any direction or anything, just it's all about you guys, whatever music you want to write, go for it, which is really cool, you know, that's kind of rare. Yeah, that's label, amazing, that. yeah, that's like total creative yeah. freedom. Yeah, so um, we're very excited about that, so we're actually looking forward to recording a lot, knowing that, you know, so that'll be fun, we go do whatever we want. That's good. Yeah. So, what is a piece of advice that you would share with, you know, up and coming bands? Is there a lesson that you've learned along the way? Uh, don't be an asshole. All the bands that come around here that are small, like the opening bands are always the fucking asshole ones. The ones that are on their way up are the dicks, and the ones that are are, are at the top of the bill are the nice ones, and you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to ever be invited on tours or anything if you're a dick. Just be a cool person, have a piece of love. I did shrooms last night, sorry. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave me some shrooms and I was fucking freaking out. I'm surprised it's being coherent. That's going to explain the hippie message, yeah. right? <laughs> You know, it's funny though that you say it that way because, like, I, I forget what band it was, but somebody else said the same people that you piss off on the way up are the ones that you're gonna have to meet, like, on yeah, the way down. Yeah, exactly. Like, always. It's so, so true. Yeah, don't be a jerk and uh, come up with something original, not just another hardcore screamo band, you know, something new and exciting. And uh, take mushrooms. That's my only advice. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, it's just for fun question. Mm -hmm. What's the strangest rumor that you've heard about the band? Rumor? Mm -hmm. Um, rumor. Hey, what were some rumors about us? That yeah. yeah. it's straight. was the biggest rumor I've heard. That our each rumor was straight. Yeah. Was I was weird. blown away by her when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's the one. <laughs> So, what has been uh, one of the most memorable tours for you? Um, I like the Atreyu tour a lot. I thought that one was a lot of fun. Those guys were cool, and uh, it was our that was like kind of our biggest tour that we had done um, back then, and uh, it was just kind of cool. We were playing in front of huge crowds, and there was just moments when we were backstage, and the crowd was. Before we went on, where it's just like, holy shit, there's like 4,000 people chanting Undead or Hollywood, whatever those idiots chant before we go on. <laughs> and it was just kind of cool, you know? It's just like, holy shit. It's really happening. <laughs> it was cool. So, um, do you remember the first show that you played as a band? Uh, yeah, we played at the Viper Room in Hollywood. It was, uh, we played three shows, I think three days in a row, or three weekends in a row. Yeah. Was it three weekends? I don't know. It was, it was, there were like secret shows because we had never played a show before and we, we were just about to leave for tour so we set up three secret shows and um, and that was the first show we played, The Viper, it was really small, it yeah. was like, I don't know, two or three hundred people. It's such a well-known venue. Yeah. Know. Yeah, that was our first show we did and then our first legit show we did was in Baltimore. It was like some, I don't know, some show we played along with Bob Dylan and Lil Wayne and shit, it was kind of Really? Yeah, oh, music. oh yeah, that's like a mismatch, yeah, it's like radio. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, that was cool. So, what would you say is probably the biggest misconception that people have about Hollywood Gun Gun? That our e-drummer is straight. He's gay, <laughs> everybody. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> well, I think that we have definitely squashed that, that yeah, rumor. Yeah, good, finally. <laughs> you guys really upset when you hear that. <laughs> well, you know, you can never trust anything on Wikipedia mm -hmm. or that. So. <laughs> well, hopefully now it'll be, the rumors will be put to rest. He's gay. And then the way. <laughs> So what is what is next for you? Like after I mean we talked about recording the new album yeah. and this tour with Avenged Sevenfold. Any plans for the holidays or anything? Um, just take some time off. Uh, a couple of the guys in the band have kids, you know, we have to spend time with the kids. I have a kid too, it's a little dog, you know, so I know what it's like to have a, a child. I had a dog before these guys, so I can kind of give them tips, you know, enjoy it. I remember Johnny Myers acting up, I said, what did you do to your dog? <laughs> she would yelp. Yeah. yeah, can I get you guys to write the therapy advice column for yeah. Pop Culture maybe? <laughs> well, we're going to take some time off and then obviously just work on the, the record and set up a, the tour. And that's it. Great. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much for speaking to us again. I appreciate it. We're sure. looking forward to checking out the uh, remix album. Yeah, out. there's some really cool remixes on there. What's up, dude? <laughs> Awkward <laughs> 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 silence. <laughs>